Hey there, Sparks and Cubbies. How you doing this week? It's so good to be back with you for our lesson time for this week. Um, it's, uh, it's January the 13th, 2021, and uh, the weather's starting to turn colder. Um, maybe we'll get some snow and winter stuff around here soon. Um, how many of you really like snow? Um, I know I do. Uh, it's just fun to have different seasons and be able to get out and play and do different things in different seasons, isn't it? Well, um, as we start our lesson today, I want to pray for us, and then we're going to actually continue our story of Joseph, but I've got something I want to share with you before then, so let's pray. God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for each of our cubbies and sparkies uh, that are joining us for our lesson today. I just ask, Lord, this morning that you would uh, just open our minds to what you want to teach us and help us to understand, Lord, that there are eternal rewards waiting for us when we're faithful to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Sparks and Cubbies, I just want to start out this morning and, and, and just, uh, I hope that you all are working hard on your handbook things, um, saying your sections. I've been working on trying to get everything updated and there's lots and lots of Sparks and Cubbies who are working on their handbooks and doing a great job with them, uh, even while you're not here at club, while you're working at home with somebody. And so I just want to congratulate you on that. Did you know each year as you work on those handbooks, um, that, uh, that you get rewards. Now I know that usually we have awards time at the end of our club and we give out our awards for, for completing handbook sections and things like that. And we haven't kept up with that this year because we haven't been together. Um, so I'm working hard on getting those things together so that we can maybe get them to you ahead of time um, so that you have them as we uh, decide to try and get back together here soon. Um, but did you know that uh, as you complete those things at the end of the year, at the end of each club year, we do an award ceremony and we give awards out for the clubbers who have finished their handbooks. Um, if you're in cubbies, you receive a, 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 a ribbon that looks kind of like this, only it's got cubby on it. Um, this is the Sparks First Year Handbook Award. So if you complete your handbook for this year, Sparkies, um, your first handbook, you get an award like this. If you uh, are a second year Sparky or you complete two handbooks, you get this ribbon. It's a little bigger and it says Second Book Award, Sparks. And if you complete all three of the Sparky books in your time of being in Sparkies, you get this plaque that says the Sparky Award. And what this is for is it's for, for clubbers who have completed uh, Wing Runner, Hang Glider, and Sky Stormer. And then there are other cool awards that's TNT clubbers that you can uh, get to for doing your handbooks. We just we just like to give out and, and reward you for the hard work that you've given. Uh, now, is it just Awana where you get rewards for working hard? Well, no, there's all sorts of other places. Uh, if you're on a sports team and your team wins, uh, maybe wins the championship for the season, you get an award. Uh, if you work hard in school, you get good grades as an award. And uh, maybe even your parents give you some kind of reward for working hard in school. As an adult, uh, your parents, uh, even myself as a parent, when you work hard, you can be rewarded by thank you notes or you can be rewarded by, by, um, by even being paid on a weekly basis for doing your job and doing it well. So in life, there's all sorts of things that as we do our best, we can be rewarded for. You know, uh, Sparks and Cubbies, I'll go back to that, to, to the idea of our handbook awards. You know, sometimes memorizing those sections is difficult, isn't it? Sometimes memorizing those sections and saying them back, we get nervous, we forget what we're going to say. Guess what? I'll tell you a secret. I struggle with memorizing scripture too. I it, I find it hard to memorize and, and remember things, um, but we can work on it and keep working on it and working on it. You know, Sometimes things in life can be tough, can't they? Life can be hard work, and, and sometimes we don't like to have to put hard work in, but life can be hard work, and you know what? Sometimes we get sick, or sometimes we get hurt. Sometimes people do bad things. Sometimes our stuff breaks and falls apart, doesn't it? You know what, though? God knows that life is hard, and it takes hard work to do our best in life. But when we follow God's instructions, did you know that God rewards us? Yeah, the Bible tells us that our reward is waiting for us as an eternity in heaven with him. You know, I told you earlier, we're going to continue our story of Joseph this morning. You know, when we talked about Joseph the last couple weeks, Joseph has had a hard time, hasn't he? Just to review, Joseph uh, 
was Jacob's favorite son, wasn't he? He, got, he was given a very fancy coat, but his brothers really didn't like him that much, did they? And because his brothers didn't like him, his brothers uh, actually sold him into slavery. Now listen, Cubbies and Sparks don't get any ideas. You can't sell your siblings into slavery. But Joseph's brothers uh, didn't like him, and they got rid of him. Joseph went uh, on our story last week. Joseph was uh, a servant for a man named Potiphar, and he did a great job, and Potiphar rewarded him, didn't he? Rewarded him by putting him in charge of everything in his house. But then Potiphar's wife said some lies about him, and Joseph was thrown into jail. Now, that doesn't sound like a reward, does it? No. Um, remember, God understands that life can be difficult at times. So while he was in jail, do you remember the two people that Joseph met? Joseph met the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh's baker and cupbearer, two people that worked for Pharaoh. Now remember, they had dreams, and Joseph, uh, uh, through God's help, Joseph was, in the, was able to tell the baker and the cupbearer what those dreams meant. And the cupbearer went back to work for the king. And at the end of the lesson last week, we talked about how Joseph asked the cupbearer, listen, Remember me as you go back to the palace. Now, Joseph was in jail um, and, and did his best in jail. And again, the jailer, the, 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 the warden of the jail, made sure that Joseph had lots of jobs to do and took care of things and trusted Joseph, even though he was still a prisoner in jail. Now, outside of the jail, the cupbearer um, kept serving the king, and he kind of forgot about Joseph. He was so glad to not be in jail anymore. He kind of forgot about Joseph and the promise he made. Well, one night, the Pharaoh, the king of all of Egypt, had some crazy, crazy dreams. And they bother him. Have you ever had crazy, weird dreams? Every now and then, I do. And, and they could be anything from, like, I'm flying to, um, to I can't find something I'm looking for. Um, sometimes we have scary dreams, and those ones we don't like so much. But these, these dreams for Pharaoh were kind of the kind that just... They really just, they really got to him. He wasn't sure what to do with them or how to deal with them. And so the king wanted to know if these dreams meant something. And the cupbearer was around, and the cupbearer thought, I know somebody who told me what my dreams meant. Maybe he could help Pharaoh. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph to come because he thought Joseph was able to interpret the dreams. Now, the truth is, was Joseph able to interp the, interpret the dreams or tell Pharaoh what the dreams meant? No. Pharaoh, uh, Joseph had to have God tell him what those dreams meant. So, but Joseph stood before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh told him what his dreams were. Do you want to know what his dreams were? They're kind of weird. Uh, in Pharaoh's dream, he saw seven cows come out of the Nile River. The Nile River was a big river. It made the the land plentiful and, and rich with, uh, with, with, with all sorts of things. But these seven cows came out of the river, and they were fat and healthy cows. And then he saw seven more come out of the Nile River. But these cows were hungry and sickly looking. It looked like those cows hadn't eaten in forever. Now the really weird part of the dream wasn't that he saw 14 cows. The really weird part of the dream is that the, is that the ugly cows, the ones that looked like they needed to eat, came and ate the seven fat, healthy cows. That's really weird, isn't it? But Pharaoh said, that's not it. I had another dream. Listen, one weird dream is enough, isn't it? But Pharaoh had a second weird dream. This time he saw seven healthy pieces of grain. Now grain could be like wheat or corn or something like that. He saw seven healthy stalks of grain growing. And then he saw seven more pieces of grain on that so uh, seven more stalks of grain that weren't healthy. They were thin and dry and they didn't produce much at all. And you know what? The seven not healthy, the seven dried up pieces of grain ate the seven healthy ones. I think that's even weirder than the cows, isn't it? Now, Joseph said, Pharaoh, I can't tell you what your dreams mean, but God can tell you what your dreams mean. 
Joseph was able to tell Pharaoh what those dreams meant. He said, the seven, uh, it, he said, Pharaoh, listen, what these dreams mean the same thing, that there's going to be seven years of plenty, seven years of healthy things happen in Egypt. And then there's going to be seven years where there's going to be a famine, where there's going to be no food um, and, and things like that. So we need to store up to take care of Egypt for the seven years of bad. Now Pharaoh thought, how do I handle this? What do I do? And remember, Joseph had been faithful to God, hadn't he? So here's what Pharaoh did. Pharaoh looked at Joseph and said, you were able to tell me what these dreams meant and you know what's coming. So I'm going to put you in charge of, of all of the gathering of food for seven years to get us through these, these seven great years and then seven years of famine. So Joseph was put in power over everything in Egypt under Pharaoh. You know, this happened because God was with Joseph. God had a special plan for Joseph, and even though things didn't go really well for years, while he was in prison and accused of doing bad things, God was setting up to get Joseph exactly where he wanted him. You know, today's story uh, uh, starts, uh, in today's story, God tells Joseph the meaning of Pharaoh's dreams. And he was able to to help Pharaoh plan for these seven years of famine. You know, in our world today, we have lots of people that want to tell us there's lots and lots and lots of ways to get to God. There's only one way that Pharaoh could save Egypt, and there's only one way that we can get to God. Only one. What's that one way? Well, the way that we can get to heaven to earn that reward that God has for us is to believe that Jesus Christ lived, that he died, and that three, three days later he rose again. See, we need to understand that we're a sinner, that we've done bad things. And those bad things go against what God says in his word. And we need to trust Jesus as our Savior. He's the only one who can take the sin away and out of our lives. You know, if you trust Jesus as your Savior, he's with you all the time. And you know what? He'll help you live your life for him, and our eternal reward waits in heaven. Clovers, I hope you made that decision for Jesus. I hope that even in the midst of times where things seem to be going really bad, that you trust that Jesus is with you, and you're waiting for your eternal reward in heaven. Thanks so much. Have a great day, and we'll see you next week.